everybody it is Monday 25th of July and if you were watching my last review which was the old crow bourbon you would have watched me do that review and then go right I'm just about to uh, rinse out my glass and then we will proceed with something very special and I did that I um, proceeded with something very special and I reviewed it and it was very very interesting and I really enjoyed it and um, I had to upload that night the old crow so did a quick bit of editing, was running out of space on my uh, iPad, so deleted some old files off, pictures and old videos that I haven't put the title sequence on and everything like that. Did the old crow, got it ready to upload, and then went, um, right, I'll just see what the, this, this particular one looks like, and it had gone. And it turned out that I deleted it, um, to the point where I deleted it with the whole batch, just not thinking, just went, oh, that clear, 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 delete, 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 delete delete from the iPad, you will not be able to recover this, fine, I've already used those videos, and uh, it's gone, absolutely gone. And of course, this is like the, you know, one of the key ones through the whole challenge, because this is number 183, this is the exact halfway point of the challenge. Um, and I have had technical hiccups before, but nothing to the point where it's gone completely. So, fortunately, the sample itself came from Andrew A.P. Butler, who is here. Not Andrew P. Butler, as I keep calling him, um, which makes him sound like he deals with urinals. It's Andrew, it sounds like actually one of those guys in a urinal that gives you a towel and everything like that is a P. Butler. He's not, he's Andrew A.P. Butler. Um, and he sent me a, a parcel, which I didn't even realize he was sending. I completely forgot he'd even talked about it. Um, about five days ago, turn up in the post with about, I think there was about 15, if not more, samples in there, of which this was one. And at the time, he'd put a bit of paper on in terms of like, this is where these ones are from, and this is what this one's called, and everything like that. And SMWS 98.1 meant nothing to me whatsoever. Um, so I've actually gone through a list. I now have th oh, 366 samples, so I can actually do this challenge, which is absolutely amazing. And I'm gonna do a separate video to kind of mark the halfway points. I'm not gonna include thank yous to everybody in this video, but I, trust me, I will do, because good God do I owe them a great deal of thanks. Andrew Butler in particular, um, I've got a spreadsheet where I've got all the samples and who they've been donated by. Andrew's donated 57 samples, 57 of these and half miniatures and things like that. It, it's like 50, I think worked out, my maths ain't great, but it's about 15% of the total amount I needed to do the challenge has come from him, just this one person. It's amazing, just incredible. Especially when you consider there's been things like Ladyburn and Milburn and this. I thought the Ladyburn and the Milburn were rare. This is possibly, or if not definitely will be, the rarest whiskey I'll have in this challenge. So it, I know I've been doing American whiskies and I still have a couple more to get. I think I've got three more to do. But to mark the halfway point, I honestly can't think of a better one to do than this. You might argue you might want to finish off on this one, but I have a specific one to finish on, um, which is personal to me. So to, do, to get to halfway, I think it's only fair that I do this one. Um, so SMWS is the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, and they um, have been going for donkey's years, and you, you pay a membership fee, and you can there's events and things like that, but they do bottlings themselves. And they, uh, most of them have like codes on them or they, they've got titles where it's not obvious where, where it's come from. Kind of give you a subtle hint as to what distillery it's from and things like that. But I believe everything also has like a code number on it. So what, what 98.1 means, I've had no idea. What I do know is this is, this is called Lomond and it's not the Loch Lomond distillery. It's actually from the Dumbarton distillery, which was, Dumbarton is here on the map. Um, this was a distillery that was um, created by Hiram Walker, or Hiram Walker, however you pronounce it, in 1938. Um, he bought the Ballantines brand in, it was either 35 or 36, and he needed um, a distillery essentially to, to keep up with the demand. So Dumbarton was, was built and created as a distillery, and it was a multi-talented distillery, it was multifaceted. It was a grain distillery along with a um, as part of it, so it wasn't a separate distillery, it was part of the building, but they, they kind of called it a distillery of its own. Um, two more whiskey distilleries, one of which was called Inverlaven, which was a pot still distillery, and the other one was called Lomond, and the reason for that is not because of Loch Lomond, which isn't that far away, but because um, of what was called the Lomond still. And whereas a pot still, you've got the pot at the bottom, and then it tapers up to the swan neck that comes off, and all the vapors run up and then run off. 
This is a combination of a pot still at the bottom, which is essentially chopped off, and then a column still is added to the top. Now, a column still, I'm gonna try and keep this as less technical as I can, simply because I don't quite understand it myself, but it's essentially a cylinder with metal sheets that you can open and close at various levels. And depending on where they are, depends on where the spirit cools down to then run off. So you can get different types of spirit running off depending on which ones you open and close and all of this lot. So it's very technical. And I, like I said, I don't really get it myself, but it's a combination. Now, the trouble with this still is, although it's quite flexible in terms of you can make different types of spirit, um, it's actually not particularly efficient. It's a bitch to keep clean because you've got so many moving parts in it. And apparently after like a couple of hours, you used to get this really thick residue that was almost impossible to clean off. So it wasn't efficient to use and pot stills were. So the, they, they basically didn't bother with Lohman stills as an option. Um, now the Lohman still itself, which I believe is this one, this is one that's at Brooklady and Brooklady took the one that was at the Dumbarton distillery and used it to make gin. Now they call it Ugly Betty. Um, and you might be able to have seen on that picture, they actually had a title of Ugly Betty on the top of it, on, on top of the still. So there's, uh, it wasn't used that often, and there was barely any bottlings of it. As far as I'm aware, the Scotch Malt Whiskey Association bottled two releases of Lomond. So this isn't Lot Lomond, this is Lomond. There's two releases of the Lomond from the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. If there is another two releases from someone else in existence, that's probably it. We're looking at maybe three different releases, so this is ridiculously rare stupidly rare this is what the bottle looks like um, of this particular 98.1 I've seen this in auction sites for 1500 quid 2000 pounds this is you know somebody I posted a picture of this on Facebook yesterday to say you know this is what I'm having tonight to mark off the halfway point and somebody actually turned around and went Do you know what rocking horse shit is actually easier to find than this so this is really something special. I am very, very fortunate in that there's actually a little bit left. So what I'll do, I tasted it last night, I went through the tasting notes, everything like that. Um, but I've got a little bit left, so I will do it for you now, whatever's left. It is about 10 mil, something like 10 mil? Yeah, 10 mil, there's, there's something like that. So um, Dumbarton, as it was, ended up closing down. Um, it was acquired by Allied Brewers in 1988, who then became Allied Demek. Uh, Allied Distillers, then Allied Um It was taken over by, they were taken over by Pernod Ricard in 2005, but it was already mothballed in 2002. The trouble with the Dumbarton Distillery was they hadn't actually designed it with modification in mind. No, there's barely any left, don't matter. Um, and they built basically into, the, the stills kind of went through concrete floors, and in order to do any kind of expansion, they essentially had to knock the building down and rebuild it, and it just wasn't cost, cost effective. So by 2002, it had already shut down. 2005, Pernod Ricard took it over. They thought, well, there's no point. They took over Allied de Mec. There's no point spending the money on trying to revitalize the distillery. So it's now, um, it's now. I think it's now fully demolished. As of about um, 2012, I think there were towers remaining. That was it. And it's gone. The whole thing's gone. Inverlaven, gone. Um, the grain side of it, gone. It's, um, you know, that's it. It's... Um, uh, development of houses I think as far as I'm aware so this ridiculously rare um, so Andrew A.P. Butler not Andrew P. Butler Andrew A.P. Butler thank you so much for this this is incredible unbelievable stuff now I have already tried it so I can remember what it was like from trying it last night it's very very soft and it's very subtle it's quite floral. There's almost a white wine character to it on the nose as well. Now this is 58.3%. I did add water to it after about halfway through. And to be honest, it didn't really need it. So I'm not gonna add water to this tiny little bit that's left. But on the nose, because it's, it's quite a pale color. Now this is 20 years old. This was distilled in April, 1972 and bottled in August, 1992. So it's a 20 year old but the color is really, I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to pick that out, but it's quite a white winey color, maybe erring more on like oak Chardonnay, getting to dessert wine, but it's still very, very pale. And on the nose, there is a floral element. There's a very light peatiness to it as well, really subtle, but it's definitely kind of a salty peatiness. 
as well as jasmine and grass and hay um, and candy floss and a slight dry white wine character to it as well. It's really complex on the nose, but very gentle. And that carries through on the palate. It's sweet and soft and delicate and really summery. Very, very summery. There's this subtle, really subtle distant peat that's very sweet. There's a sea salt and a black pepper feel, again, off in the distance. It's so delicate and it's not, there's not a huge finish, but it does linger. The flavors that are there just trickle along, just dancing on your tongue and at the back of your throat. But it's not powerful. It, it, for some people, it wouldn't be powerful enough. For something, I think there would almost be an expectation of for something to be so rare and so sought after and so expensive, you would expect something to be really powerful. And this is the other way. This, this is a Lowland whiskey. D Dumbarton Distillery in the Laven, Lowland are considered Lowlands. Although Lot Lowland, which isn't that far away, is technically considered a Highland. But it's, it's not even a classical Lowland. It's so light and soft and subtle and sweetness comes through and kind of like gooseberries as well. tiniest, tiniest little bit. It's a great whiskey, not just because of its rarity and that it's so difficult. It's a fantastic whiskey. It's a summer whiskey. It reminds me quite a lot of the Belgian Owl and the Diedenacker number one from Belgium and Luxembourg, which again were delicate, were soft, were floral, were fruity, were light, were soft. And this is that at 20 years old. There is a tiny bit of oakiness, but nothing particularly major. I've no idea what casks it was um, uh, matured in. Judging by the color, I can't imagine it's anything particularly heavy, heavily sherry or first fill or anything like that because it was such a light color. It is a superb whiskey. It really is. At 2,000 pounds, you're paying for the rarity rather than the quality of the whiskey itself, I think, I do think, but I think it is a fantastic whiskey. It's up there with the not the very best scotches that I've ever had, but it's up there in terms of the most memorable, mainly because of the story behind it, mainly because of the fact that I've even been able to get this near me, let alone pour some down my throat. But as a whiskey itself, just trying to look at this standalone outside, I think it's a fantastic whiskey. I think it is so delicate, it's so enjoyable, but I think it's probably too delicate for some people. I, I really do think some people are just gonna go, there's not much to it. There's not really a great deal to it. I can't see what all the fuss is about. That's it, it's gone. I mean, that's probably about a hundred quid that was in there. Um, so Andrew, thank you so much for that. Incredible stuff, really, really good. A, and a good whiskey as well, which is nice. The fact that you can sometimes come across these things that are ultra rare and ultra expensive and you try it and you go, all right, it's not that good. Um, whereas that is good. I don't think it's 2,000 pounds worth of good, but I can understand why that price is. So that's halfway, 183 down, another 183 to go, six months gone and another six months to go. The fact that I've managed to get all the samples that I need to complete the challenge, the end is now in sight because I have the samples to do it. I've actually got slightly over and what I'm gonna do is go through and put a new schedule. I'm gonna put the schedule on the list of whiskeys page. And that will be the schedule of what I'm gonna do. And if anybody has any thoughts about, well, I, I'm gonna group them together in terms of, um, it's basically gonna be finish off Highland and the other little bits of Scotch, then Canada and Japan, then Speyside, which is a big chunk. Then I'm gonna do a load of world whiskeys and then I'm gonna finish off on Isla. And that will be the plan. So January will essentially be Isla. At the moment, all I've got on the list are um, Speyside is alphabetical, uh, as is 
Japanese and things like that. It's just like alphabetical because that's where I've cop- copy and pasted it from the spreadsheet. If you love a look at it and you think, actually, I, I do them together or I do that one after that one or that one before that one, please do help me out and give me a shout and, and you know, I can tweak it then and do a bit of a running order. Um, and what I am going to do is uh, people that have donated things that are, uh, you know, I basically move them out of the list because I've got some more like core standard brands rather than anything particularly too far out. I'm more than happy to send them back to you. Um, you know, you've sent them to me in good faith, and if I'm not going to use them for the challenge, I will send them back to you. I really don't have an issue with that because I don't want you to have felt like you've wasted whiskey that you didn't need to give away. Or alternatively, potentially at the end of the challenge, I might auction them off, um, sort of the bits that are left, or maybe carry on for a bit because I'm working on a little bit of a project which might mean that I can carry on a little bit further but it won't be part of the charity challenge this will be something slightly different anyway I digress thank you everybody all of you and I'm going to do a separate video naming you all individually um, for the samples it's incredible your generosity your kindness knows no bounds and it's it's humbling to, that you've sent these you put them in the post and you've sent them to me for me to do this Daft challenge that amazingly people are supporting, and I am raising money for charity. I am at about eight hundred. I broke through eight hundred quid, um, so I'm still a long way off the five thousand pounds. But this eight hundred quid that otherwise wouldn't be going to the Children's Heart Surgery Fund. Um, so yes, thank you for the people that are watching. Some of you crazy people that seem to be watching every single one that I'm releasing, sometimes on a daily basis. You're mad. I thought I was a bit screwy for doing this, but you're mad for watching this. Um, but it means that I don't feel like I'm shouting into the void because I know that there are some people there that are actually listening to this ramblings that's coming out of my mouth. Um, yes, it's been fantastic. It's been a hectic six months. It's been eventful. The next six months are going to be even more eventful. Pretty much around early October time, it's going to go pretty mad because there's going to be another person in the house. But it's been worth it. I've loved it. I've loved meeting or in you know meeting people online, not necessarily face to face, but meeting people online, making new friends, and some really good friends actually, some really really wonderful people, because there is some shit going on in the world right now. You turn on the news and it is depressing as hell. There is so much anger out there and hatred and suffering for no reason for the fact that you think one thing and I think another, so I'm gonna kill you or I'm gonna hurt you or I'm gonna give you abuse or anything like that. And here in this little world, I've got people that are raving about whiskey and going, have you tried that? Wow, that was absolutely brilliant. Oh, I, I, I didn't like that, but you like that, that's absolutely fine. I really like this. And there's none of the, I like that and you don't like that and therefore you're wrong and you're going to get grief and I'm going to abuse you and everything like that because it's not worth it. None of it is worth it. None of it is worth fighting over. None of it is worth dying over. Whether it's some magic man in the sky or the football team you support or the colour of your skin, it's not worth it. It is not worth this blood and death and hate and anger. Why? Let's just enjoy ourselves. Let's just appreciate how wonderful we are as people and what we can do by making whiskey or writing books or making films or music or just generally being outside in the fresh air and having fun with your kids or your friends or even if it's just yourself, trying to find bloody Pokemon. As long as you're not hurting anybody, what does it matter? If you're enjoying yourself and you're making the most out of life and you're not physically hurting or mentally hurting another person or an animal or the earth, then do it. Do it, enjoy yourself. And if you don't agree with what that person's doing, think about what they're doing, try and look at it from their point of view and just say to yourself, why are they doing it? Maybe it gives them some happiness. Are they hurting anybody? No then let them get on with it because you know what I'm going to find something that I like doing and I'm going to do that instead it's crazy so it just feels like 2016 is just a mental year everything is falling apart it's just bonkers and yet there are little pockets on social media and out there in the world where there's happiness and there's joy and there's love and there's respect and there's just general humanity which seems to be missing from a large part of it and it probably is the media because that's what sells papers 
and airtime and advertising and that might just be a small part of what's going on and it's that we don't need it it's not just not necessary let's just enjoy ourselves I'm rambling but it's you know I've got to halfway I'm happy I'm really happy um, and the next half is going to be even more fun I'm pretty certain it will be so thank you thank you all of you for watching thank you all of you for donating I don't know how I can show my appreciation any more than me just rabbiting on um, I'm going to edit this and upload it before I delete it and I shall see you in the next one. Cheers.